welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 126. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. We're alive. We are. We are <laughs> alive, and if we ever took that for granted in the past, like, I don't think we do that anymore now. Yeah, the last couple weeks have definitely been rough. We got home from Utah, and then uh, Caleb was sick, and then we got sick, and it's been a rough going, but we're right, finally yes. on the mend. Uh, we still have a little bit of a cough, but we're feeling much better. And hopefully this week, we'll be able to get everything back on track. That's our hope. But I did want to say thank you to everybody who was sending us your well wishes, your prayers. It's greatly appreciated. And believe me, we, even though couldn't go on to Facebook as much and respond to everything, we were reading them and we really, really appreciate it all. Yes, thank you so much. Like, I think it's made the difference for me as far as just like having hope that every day was getting better. Yeah. That's, that's what you needed. You need to anchor that hope to something, right? Yeah, so thank you very much for supporting us through the last couple weeks, even though we haven't been able to stick to our regular video upload schedule, we've done our best. Uh, but one thing that being sick for the last couple weeks has done is it's kind of made us reevaluate what we want to do with Two Crazy Ketos. Our focus on Two Crazy Ketos is still education and doing product reviews and really being the support for the community. But we want to try to focus on what we're good at and also what the most amount of people are utilizing. Mm -hmm. So we made the decision that we're gonna make a couple of small changes. One of the biggest ones coming down to the monthly challenges. Yeah, we're gonna rein back uh, doing monthly challenges. We're not eliminating it all together, but you know, monthly challenges and planning for daily recipes takes me about 30 or 40 hours at least a month just planning that. And one thing when you're sick, you start to think about what can you let go of? Yes. What can you work out? And I wanna make sure that whatever time that we invest is is getting you know the most amount of help mm -hmm. to people. And um, so we're just gonna kind of rein back on that yep. and, and focus our attention more on maybe doing videos on different recipes, you know, so you won't have one every single day, but you know, maybe the one that we do put out there, more people will use. Yeah, one of the things that we noticed is that some people love the daily challenges and there's other people who they really don't care. And the whole focus for us is how can we reach the most amount of people? How can we impact the most amount of people? So we're not gonna eliminate the daily challenges or the monthly challenges completely just not every single month. That'll be a little bit easier on you guys and it'll definitely be a little bit easier on us. Now, we are going to, again, try to do a couple of recipe videos a month as far as videos, but we're gonna ask for is your help and that is let us know down in the comment section what type of recipes are you looking for? Are you looking for more of dessert type recipes? Are you looking for just like easy meal prep kind of recipes? Those kind of videos. What do, what do you want from us? The only thing we're gonna say is we have really one rule when it comes to recipe videos, and that is they have to be very simple. They can't be recipes that take like three hours to create. I don't right. mind something that takes a long time to cook, but it's gotta be very easy to make. So easy that even Rachel can make it. Yeah. So with that being said, we again, just wanna say once again, thank you so much for everybody who has been supporting us for the last couple of weeks. Now we do have a little bit of housekeeping. Yes. And that is, first of all, we have to pick the winner for the Chow Club box. So exciting. This is a good one because there was a big bag of chocolate in here and also we got the apron, which I'm loving that apron. Yeah. And, the, and it's black. Well, and the better news is our cold is not coming to your house. That's like, right. This is going to be the box that stays here. Right. But you're going to get a new box from Keto Child directly. Yep. So let's go ahead and pick a winner. We're going to go ahead over to pick a winner. Pick a winner. And uh, we already have the URL in here. We're going to hit fetch. Anything goes. Let's see how many people want a 
Chow Club box. 274. Wow. You ready? The winner is... Lynette, Lynette Burner says, hey guys, I would love to win the Keto Chow August box. Well, good news, Lynette, you did win it. Congratulations. So Lynette, here's what you need to do. You need to send us an email at joe at twocrazyketos.com and uh, send us all of your shipping information. I need your mailing address, your full name, as well as the email address that you want to have if you don't even if you don't have one on file already with Keto Chow, make sure that's all included in the email. We will forward it off to Keto Chow and they will send you out the August Chow Club box. So fun. I think you're going to love that apron. Now, if you are interested in a Chow Club box, there is a link down below for that. And they've actually changed the way they do it. It used to be you had to subscribe for the box by the 15th of the month to get the new box or the box that's coming up in the following month. Well, they've changed that. I don't even know if you know this because you were sick and I was on the live stream when they were talking about it. Yeah. You now have up to the last day of the month. Wow. So no matter what day you're watching this video, if you're watching this video on August 29th and you go ahead and subscribe for the Chow it's Club, not too late. you will get the September box That's up awesome. until the last day of the month. So you use the link down below. That link is going to get you 10% off of your first box. And then that box has 10% off of what's in it plus free shipping. And then the second month you end up with 12% off of what's in it. And the third month is 15% off and then it stays there forever. So a uh, great way to try different Keto Chow products. Now, if you're not interested in the subscription box, don't forget there's another separate link down below. And if you use that link, you get 10% off of your entire purchase so long as it's not a subscription product. So any kind of, you need electrolyte drops, which we have been living oh off goodness, of electrolyte drops. Oh my goodness, we absolutely been living on We them. had the little individual packets because we yes. ran out of our big bag and Rachel was literally like sucking on them like like, like ice pops, right? And just like squirting them in your mouth. Literally squirting them in your mouth and you would, I would feel energy immediately. Yeah. Like when you're just wanting immediate relief and you feel like garbage, like it, it was amazing yeah. how much electrolytes make the difference. I really don't think we would have gotten through being sick without having the keto no chow way. electrolyte drops, without having some keto chow. No way. Because that was giving us some nutrition when we were like not really hungry. Yeah. We were able to take some keto chow. And then also the Redmond Relight because that was giving us a little bit of flavor along with the electrolytes. And the one thing I have learned now, electrolytes are going to get you through any type of sickness. Whether you have a headache or a cold, they're gonna make you feel better and I highly recommend picking some up. Again, all the links are down below. We were big proponents of electrolytes before we got sick. Yep. Now, baby, there's no stopping us. That's right. You're gonna be sick about hearing about electrolytes, yeah. but let me tell you, it was, it was a life and death difference as yeah. far as how our day went, as far as eating, you know, drinking the electrolytes. Like it was a huge, huge game changer. The other thing that we really have been surviving on the last couple of weeks is the kettle and fire bone broths. Yes. I forgot how much I enjoyed Me them. Too. And I was like, I just, I didn't want to have to cook anything. Right. So we were going in, we have all the little cartons and we would just each have a so carton of easy. that for lunch. Add a bunch of Redmond salt in there to really up the electrolytes and the, up the sodium even more. And it was really filling. It tasted good and it just got us through our day. I was amazed too, because there are like so many different beautiful soups, like the cauliflower and the broccoli cheese. Spicy and the, cauliflower. The miso one, like there's such a variety of flavors. And yeah, it's sometimes you, until it's like winter months or you're feeling sick yep. is when you, you know, drink bone broth. I don't know what's wrong with us. Why That's are right. we not using it all of the time? We felt know. great. I, I'm definitely gonna start incorporating it It again. tasted fantastic. Fantastic. And um, okay, I don't recommend this plan, but but I am down 11 pounds. <laughs> 11 pounds since all of this started. Yeah, and like we crazy. were eating. So it, yeah. I think the difference was is that we were eating, but we weren't eating all day. Like we weren't constantly snacking. Well, it's like when you're, you know, you don't feel good. You're just like, okay, what can I not do? Right. And you're just trying to not use any energy at all. So right. it was like even getting up and going to the refrigerator is expending energy. So it was just like, eh, I'll eat one once a day, twice a day, it'll be fine. Like, right. I just don't feel like snacking. Like I don't have the energy to snack. And right. it was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Crazy. We have some mail. Yes. Okay, so we got over the mail. We have a couple of pieces of mail here. Um, okay. 
Let's see. Uh oh, is it scary? I man? got this thing. I'm like, is somebody like mailing us like gauze pads or something? Uh oh. But it's not. So what this is, it this is from Shell. Hey Shell. She said this is a fun way. Uh, eat one of these and then try anything sour and it's going to make it sweet. What? I like to use this on pickles and salt and vinegar pork rinds. It will also amp up the sweetness in fruit. So enjoy it. Oh my gosh. So these are, we're going to have to try this. I don't have anything to miracle like with us berry. right now. They're rich berry miracle berries. Ten miracle berries. Oh my gosh. It says naturally sweetens sour food. I feel like this would be like a fun we, game to play with we people. Need, we need to do a video on that, but just do some funny things. Okay, let's look at the back of this. So there is 0.35 calories, zero grams of fat, 0.7 grams of protein, 0.06 total carbohydrates. It's basically a fruit. Do you think that it could like help chicken liver or... Oh. Oxtail well, it's or... supposed to make something sour taste sweet. sweet. Oh, okay. So, so pickles. Yeah. We make it like so a sweet So it says pickle. it brings tropical goodness straight to your taste buds, rich with active uh, glycoprotein called miraclin. Uh, don't worry about the fancy science stuff. Just know that this naturally derived ingredient gently sweetens sour foods like huh. lemon and lime for 15 to 60 minutes. Really? Okay. That's a Without long time. adding sugar. So it says take one to two servings of the Miracle Berry halves from the package and place it on your tongue. Ditch the pit if necessary, it may taste bitter. Slowly chew it for 30 seconds, nibbling on the front teeth if you can. Try moving the fleshy part of the berry around your mouth and then you try to chew and spread the flavors far and wide. This absolutely feels like a game night. I feel like oh, we should eat one and then kiss, but then again, your kisses are already sweet. So uh, like, I don't need to turn them sweet. Somebody's trying to earn keto brownie points. Thank sure. you very much, y'all. Yeah, I can't, I can't we're gonna to have to do it. Like, we'll have to do this like on a video. Maybe yeah. we can do it on one of our upcoming lives. That would kind of be that really would be, fun. You know what? We need to bring back the pickle pop. Yes. And see how they do with that. <laughs> Remember the pickle pops? So I did want to, speaking of lives, so I know that uh, it is August and we have not yet had our live stream for our uh, Patreons. But unfortunately, between being sick and then this weekend, I actually have football games from one o'clock in the afternoon to 10 o'clock at night. And then the following week, we're gonna actually be in uh, Omaha. Omaha. So uh, this month, we may not have a live stream. If we do, it'll probably be during the week because then the following week, I again have evening football game. So we are going to work that out. Just make sure you're staying tuned over on our Patreon. And again, we appreciate everybody who supports us over on Patreon. Uh, now we do have one more here. This is from your best sounding friend. And my favorite sounding friend. It's from Paul, Paul over there in Look Wales. This. Such, such a cute card. This is Joe and Rachel. Look at this penmanship. Is that beautiful? I think he's got better penmanship than you. I know he does. Says uh, to Joe and Rachel to say thank you very much. Um, it, actually, Paul uh, lost his father mm -hmm. recently, and we've just been corresponding back and forth. And he just wanted to say thank you for. Well, he has that. a little note in there, but uh, you don't have to read the whole note. But he did send us a little bit of a gift. So he sent you this beautiful coffee mug. I am so excited about this. Look at this gorgeous Welsh love spoon. So neat. Look at this. And the and the spoon is absolutely gorgeous. He also sent us some cheese, which I have in the refrigerator. And can I have the, the little paper in there? Sure. Because he also sent us this lavender bread. Lavender. And it explains in here what this is. So maybe you could read that. It says... Um, I thought Joe might enjoy some lovely cheese from Wales and Rachel, the mug is for you. The laver bread is for your fear factor. Okay. It's a famous Welsh delicacy made from seaweed and is traditionally cooked and eaten with bacon for breakfast, although I don't like it much. Well, great. Just Thanks a lot. Just to show <laughs> that Christian fellowship goes beyond geography and boarded. God bless. Much love, Paul Price. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paul. I'm excited. Yeah, we're definitely going to be doing this. We will be getting back into some fear factors. We don't have any camping trips planned for a couple of weeks because we're traveling to Omaha and then we're going up to Louisville. Uh, but we're thinking about actually just doing a fear factor right here at the table at some point yeah. in the next week or so. Yeah, I think so. it's it's time. Speaking of Louisville. This is so beautiful. I can't I know. I love that this. thing. 
Speaking of Louisville, I don't know if you know this, but Bronson is going to be speaking at Louisville now. We're really excited about it, wow. and we get to stay with him as well. Oh my gosh. We got a giant party house going in Louisville. It's going to be awesome. We're gonna I don't think anybody's going to be sleeping. Oh no. Right? Everybody's going to be fun. staying in that house, partying, and then hanging out with Autumn and stuff. So we're really excited. Hopefully you guys are coming to Louisville or joining online. All of the links for all of the Louisville Conference for Keto Palooza is down below in the description. It's going to be a pate. You ready to get into some comments? Yeah. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with all the comments. No, seriously, we're still alive. <laughs> okay, let's start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. Now, if you're new to our channel, this is where we like to go onto our Facebook group and find a post that we find a little inspirational, something that inspires us and other people. And this week's is from Rian. Hey, Rian. And she said, just a reminder of how awesome we all are and what a great job we're doing. The scale is the devil. Yes, it is. You are amazing. It says the scale will only tell you the numerical value of your gravitational pull. It will not tell you how beautiful you are, how much your friends and family love you, or how amazing you are. Oh my gosh, I love that. Is that not awesome? That is so true, and we talked about that a lot. It is a one-dimensional number, a flat number, and that is not the totality of who we are. That's but right. But we put so much emphasis on it, and I think that we don't take enough time to, you know, call your friends call your family members hey what's my value to you right i feel like that would be a better right. assessment of ourselves what do i what do i do in your life what do i mean to you because i think that if the people that love us had the opportunity to tell us what our our value is it would be a number it would be you are 100 percent super valuable to me right. i need you in my life you make a difference and i think we need to check in more with what matters and not with this scale. Yeah, so let's get into this week's subscriber of the week. Now, again, if you are new to our channel, we have Welcome. a Facebook family group. There is a link down below. There are thousands of people in there who are every day posting up recipes, pictures of their food, success stories, their wins, their struggles, and they're there to support you. And what we ask you to do is please go share your story. We are not asking you to share your story because we need content. No. We are asking you to share your story because your story is going to inspire someone. And I know we say this every week. And every week someone puts up a post like, it took me three years, but last week's post really finally motivated me. Because yeah. somebody out there is going through what you're going through and they think they're alone. And when you put up your story, they're gonna be like, oh, somebody else gets it. Yeah. So it's really, really important to share your story, whether you're one week in, you're one month in, you're one year in, or you're 10 years in, please share your story. So this week's subscriber of the week is Brandy. Hey, Brandy. Brandy said, today marks three years since I've changed my life with Keto Carnivore. It hasn't always been easy, and how I eat now is completely different than how I ate when I started but it's been a great experience and there is no end in sight. The benefits are numerous and different to count. I am awake all day with no issues and I sleep all night. I went to the zoo this summer with my visiting family and kept up with everyone without having to sit down to catch my breath. Three years ago, I could barely walk to the milk section in the grocery store without finding somewhere to sit because my back hurts so bad. Life is good and it's just gonna get better. I love, oh my gosh. Why? You look so what a beautiful. Difference. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah, oh my goodness. Like every single day, I love seeing these pictures and, and knowing that feeling on the inside as things changes. Like I like looking at your feet and knowing those feet don't hurt like they used right. to. I like looking and seeing and thinking about your back and thinking like, yeah, your back, if you've ever, you know, been overweight, the difference that a hundred pounds makes mm -hmm. on, on my back, like mm -hmm. that, I mean, just my shoulders, everything, just being able to get through the day, life just feels so much different once you're losing the weight and the inflammation and it just makes life so much better yeah that is exciting it's interesting right before we got sick we had a problem with one of our mowers and you know anthony and i had to make a decision of repair an 18 year old mower or buy a new mower and we opted to 
repaired the mower because a new one is $13,000. It's a lot. And even though the other one is 18 years old, even the guy in the store was like, listen, they don't make these like they're used, like they used to. So we bought the part. Well, the part weighed like a hundred pounds and we brought it home. And I remember like, we're trying to like hold this thing up while you're installing it. And it's heavy. It weighs a hundred pounds. And I remember thinking to myself, like how heavy this is. And then thinking to myself, I used to carry Period. this weight on my body every day. Yeah. Like I was getting tired carrying it from the truck to the driveway, like mm -hmm. where we had to put it in. Yet I had to carry that weight every day on my body. I can remember just being tired going from our bedroom to my car mm -hmm. and, and from the car to walking into work. Right. And like how that was like a chore. And I, you know, you don't think about it as much anymore, but we probably should. Right. Because yeah, that is an, that is an effortless thing for me to do is to just go from my bedroom, get in the car, drive to work, get out of the car and, and go into work, even on hot days. Yeah. Like it's not something that I have to dread right. because you can just, you can do it now. Yeah. And I have to say, if you're ever getting discouraged, maybe you're halfway into your weight loss journey and you're like, I don't understand. Just remember where you came from and a good yeah. way to even remember where you came from. Maybe just go get enough weight. That's maybe 20% of the weight you've lost. Yeah. If you've lost a hundred pounds, go grab 20 pounds and strap it on your back for the day. Yeah. And then start thinking, okay, wow. Like I'm, I'm having a hard time carrying this just 20% of my weight loss. Can you imagine where you would be if you hadn't lost it? And it really will start to bring things in perspective. So don't ever lose sight of where you came from and just keep focused on where you want to go. Yeah, you're doing great. Okay, so first comment from our YouTube last week is from Meg. Hey Meg, she says, I enjoy watching these every week. I always learn something. I recently increased my protein start of July, slowly and steady, up to about 90 grams a day. Awesome. It's a chore some days, but in looking at the month of July, I dropped 8.6 pounds. I also lost inches. I am now in Wonderland with 49 pounds gone. That is like exceptional. That is awesome. And again, like we talk about all the time, like the best way to eat, I mean, Dr. Barry, he talks about like eating just until you were comfortable be full, but again, only eating certain things, like pretty much meat. Yep. Um, but eating a one-to-one -one lifestyle where you're eating like one gram of protein for one gram of energy, which is your fat and your carbohydrates combined, it's gonna be the healthiest way to eat. That's what's gonna really sustain you. If you can't get to a high amount of protein, like she's doing, you slowly work your way up. You don't have to go from eating 60 grams of protein to 150 grams of protein overnight. You're gonna work your way up. Now, one thing I do wanna say, now people message us all the time, is when you get to your you know, final goal weight, you probably will have to increase your fat a little bit because again, you have to be giving your body fat in order for it to have the fuel. But when you are trying to lose weight, you still have to eat fat, but you don't necessarily have to eat like 150 grams of fat. No. You can allow your body to utilize it, but you do have to be consuming fat for the vitamins, for the nutrients, for everything to absorb in your body. So it is very important. Do not eliminate fat. Something even like a protein sparing modified fast is not designed for you to be eating super high protein with 30 to 40 grams of fat per day. That is not a healthy way to be eating and it's not how it was designed. Okay, next comment is from Gary. Hey Gary. Gary said, great episode. Really like the info about electrolytes. I have been I falling like asleep in the middle of the day while watching shows on streaming services with my wife. I just feel fatigued a lot more. I've started taking electrolytes and they seem to help. Electrolytes I bought are powdered form and are a pain in the rear though. Uh, they don't really mix well and they are a pain to use. They're scoop and try and mix in with a one liter bottle half full of water. When I finish these, I'm gonna try the solutions you mentioned. Aw, thanks Gary. So yeah, electrolytes were definitely gonna give you energy and that's one thing that we noticed, like when we were feeling weak, just taking a little bit of sodium, a little bit of potassium, really gave us energy. Now again, the, the electrolytes that we like to use on a regular basis is the Keto Chow Electrolyze Drops, which is great if you want something that doesn't have any added flavoring. Is it salty? Yes, because electrolytes are mostly sodium, potassium, and magnesium. You're doing so a job. You're, if, if they're, you're not gonna have anything that doesn't have any salty taste. And if you do, you're not getting enough sodium because right. you need 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of sodium per day. 
So we like the Keto Chow Electrolyte Drops. We love the Redmond Relight, which each serving has a thousand milligrams of sodium and 500 milligrams of potassium. And then we also do like the Perfect Keto, which has a little bit less sodium and I think about 600 milligrams of potassium. So some of the other ones that are out there, they're just as good. Uh, these are just the ones that we personally like. Uh, we find that they are the most cost efficient for the amount of electrolytes that you are getting. One thing that people do message us again about is like they think the Redmond is too salty. You can always water it down more. And you can also, if you don't mind something like some liquid stevia, add a little bit of liquid stevia. And that's a great way to help cut down that saltiness. But again, you do need at least 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of sodium per day. And again, they're doing a job. Mm -hmm. They're not like a, a tropical beverage. Right. You know, like I think sometimes, you know, we're used to, oh, electrolytes are Gatorade and Powerade that just basically tastes like Kool-Aid. Well, there's a reason why. Right. They basically just Lots taste of like sugar Kool-Aid. And it's got sodium in it. That's pretty much what that is. Yeah. It's sodium with a whole bunch of sugar to mask the sodium in it. Exactly. Now, we do have a video from a long time ago where we compare different electrolytes, and I'm currently working on redoing that video, but it is a lot of research because the video really broke down all of the different brands that were out there at the time and where the most cost efficient one was, what was gonna give you the most amount of potassium, the most amount of sodium, and broke it down that way. So we're gonna redo that video. I'm in the process right now of researching everything, and then we're gonna be able to give you an updated version with all of the current forms of electrolytes that most people are using. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you hit the bell notification so that you're notified when that video comes out. Uh, next comment is from Just Beachy. Hey, Just Beachy. I'm the same way with trendy stuff, and I honestly don't want bread. Heck, it took me a year to get a chaffle maker. I had bought one way back and returned it. I went through a few weeks with using the mini dash, and now it's back in the cabinet. Oh, well, the more people race and hoot about something, the rebel in me says, nope, you're not the boss of me. I'm sure that it is a character flaw of me, but that's exactly how I am. So yeah. if everybody is like, I'm... You know, I remember when we were doing chaffles, yep. like we did a couple and Joe was like, oh, let's try this, let's try, and I'm like, no. Yeah. Everybody's eating that, I'm eating something else. So right. it's 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 a character flaw, probably. But if I feel like something's being super hyped up, I'm very suspect. Uh, next one is from Jill. Hey, Jill. Jill said, love the idea of the August challenge. I have a 15 and a 12 year old. My 15 year old daughter is more carnivore already. She would rather have meat and eggs with rice than anything else. But my son is so different. He doesn't like meat. He will eat hot dogs and turkey brats, and that is about it. And sometimes not even that. He says his tummy hurts when he eats anything other than that. How do I get him to eat more protein? Uh, he has a dairy allergy, so I can't even add heavy whipping cream so things to, to he eats. I have only been keto since July 5th of this year and I'm feeling so much better and I want my son to eat better protein, but I don't know how. Um, that's, I don't know, <laughs> that's gonna be a little bit of a struggle. I guess yeah. try keep giving him things until he feels better. Uh, you might wanna try some different types of things like some pea protein or some hemp protein or, or other options that are that way. You know, Maybe he really just, is having an issue with some meats. Maybe you can incorporate some of the other types of plant-based proteins in there. The only one I would avoid is soy because obviously soy has so many other medical issues. I think it's a fun opportunity to, as a family, try different proteins mm -hmm. and say like, hey, you know, mom wants you to try new things. We're trying to eliminate some stuff. I think that, you know, we both know that sugar and empty carbohydrates aren't doing anything for us. Right. So we wanna make sure that we're eating healthier. And I understand that maybe you don't like the chicken, for instance, that I've made, but let's go through other protein sources and, and shop the outer aisle of the grocery store and together find out what you do like. Right. It's not a case of, there, it's not an option. Well, if you don't like this, then we'll just go back to the, the way that we used to eat. We're not doing that. So we right. have to move forward and I am willing to hold your hand and, and you help me understand what it is that you do like and let's find a protein you do like. One thing that I think some people do forget is don't forget about seafood because there is a lot of protein in seafood. So you can have things like salmon and uh, again, I don't know if he's willing to try the salmon, but if you try salmon, salmon is a very, very mild fish. And even somebody who does not like fish, 
I like salmon uh, because it's not so fishy. Shrimp is another very, very high protein, low fat type of food. So there are some other options and I guess the best thing to do is just keep trial and error. Just keep trying more and more things and eventually you should be able to find something that he can tolerate. Uh, next one is from Fieber. Hey Fieber, it says Marie has a recipe for protein sparing modified fast chocolate pudding with only egg whites. It's pretty good, but right now I have about 15 egg yolks in my freezer. I need to eat egg salad a couple times a week if I'm going to use her egg whites only from real eggs recipes. I ordered a hand mixer so I could try her bread, which I am planning to do tomorrow. I asked Marie about the carb count in allulose. She says they don't count. For everything else, she recommends doing a total carb count, not net. I know there are different opinions in this area. I don't really understand how those carbs would not be counted. So, um, yeah, she's got some amazing recipes. And again, we are not discounting Maria Emmerich or anything. We still believe in doing a total carb count to some extent, even if you're doing a net count with a total cap, and that includes counting allulose. Yeah. Why? Because you need to have a limit. Don't tell an addict that something is unlimited. Right. And that is where we run into issues. So if you tell me I can have an unlimited amount of allulose, I'm going to go off the rails. Well, the problem is, is nothing unlimited is good. We actually had another subscriber put a post, I think it was Sherry on their YouTube channel about like, you know, hey, you can eat six bags of cauliflower rice and be way under your caloric needs for the day. You're still binging. Yeah. Right? It's still an issue. I'm sure that, you know, Maria probably doesn't have the struggle that we have where we would eat an entire loaf of her bread in a, in a sitting. Right. But it is completely possible for me to do that. Right. Like, so I have to put a total carb cap on my day. Right. And, you know, if, we, if we're not going to be afraid of total carbs, that's the problem. Like, are we afraid of total carbs? Right. And that's why we're like, well, I want you to give me some kind of food where I just, there, it's zero. That's like the Weight Watchers mentality where there are certain foods that are zero points mm -hmm. and I just have to act like they don't even happen. To me, even the allulose, it's happening. It's right. an ingredient. There's something that's going into my body. So I need to put a total carb cap on that. Doesn't mean that I can't still enjoy her bread recipes or pudding recipes, but I have to put a fence around it because other people may not have the same carb addiction struggle that I do. And I just know, like Joe is saying, you can't tell me I'm limited right. because it will be well beyond what is normal, like unlimited thing. Yeah. And again, like she said, there are differing opinions. Dr. Barry will tell you there's no such thing, including allulose. There's nothing is unlimited. I will tell you there is one thing, and Dr. Barry would probably agree with this, there is one thing that you can either, if you want unlimited, you can eat as much of it as you want, beef. Well, because you will cut yourself you can't, off can't Because you can't overeat beef. At some point, your body's gonna be like, whoa, I've had enough. But you're not going to overdo your beef. So if you just wanna eat until you're really stuffed and like you, you wanna eat until it's like coming out the top end, Have a big go steak. ahead and keep eating beef until you just can't eat anymore. Right. But when it comes to the bread and stuff, we're not saying anything is wrong with it. We enjoyed it. We're gonna try the, the pudding. It's just that just for us, we need to have some kind of offense and go when you can only have X amount. Uh, next one is from Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. She said, did I hear you correctly? Did you say that while doing the protein sparing modified fast, you cannot have keto chow ice cream and that the bread Maria makes is limited also? I've done keto for the past two years, 70 uh, female, and I've lost 110 the first year. Awesome. Second year have not gained or lost anything. I need to lose a few more pounds and have been doing net carbs. This week I changed to total carbs and I'm trying the protein sparing modified fast. Any advice is welcome. Thank you for a great channel. Okay, so first of all, let's get to the middle part of this before we talk about the other part. I've lost 110 pounds in it's the amazing. first year. And the second year I haven't lost or gained. Okay, so you haven't lost. You haven't gained. That's amazing. Right? It's seriously amazing, Rebecca. I don't think before keto there was ever a time in my life where I wasn't losing or gaining. Right. right? There was always, I was always either losing or gaining You've weight. achieved actual was, maintenance. Yeah, I was either on a diet because I was fat or I was 
off of a diet and getting fat. Right. So if you've been able to go an entire year without gaining any weight, Incredible. that's an accomplishment in itself. So now, as far as keto chow, yes, you can have keto chow on a protein spurring modified fast. Just understand that you have protein in there. You need to have about 10 grams of fat with a keto chow shake to be able to utilize the vitamins that are in there. So that would mean like a scoop and about a tablespoon of butter, that's gonna give you your 10 grams of fat. If you're doing a protein sparing modified fast correctly, which I feel like a lot of people now are trying to just live this super high protein, very low fat lifestyle, which is not how it was intended. We right. talked about that before. Um, you're only supposed to be doing it every other day, which means here's what a protein sparing modified fast is. It is an alternate day fasting routine, but on your fasting day, the day where you wouldn't be eating, you're eating high protein, with very low fat, just enough fat to be able to get your nutrients in. So, you know, you would, an alternate day fast would be you eat everything you can eat in a day and then you go 24 to 36 hours without eating. Here's what you're doing is you're eating a bunch of protein, like 130 grams of protein with 30 grams of fat. So it's not as easy as it sounds no. to get that much protein with less than 10 total carbs and with less than 30 grams of fat. Because even chicken breast has fat. Even salmon has fat in it. And so that's just something that you have to really look at when it comes to the protein sparing. Same thing with her bread. You know, again, yes, you can make the bread without allulose, but again, don't make anything unlimited. You are going to be eating a bunch of egg whites there. And if you are having allulose, I would still limit the amount that you're gonna have on a regular basis. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a quick commercial break and then we can come back with the Facebook comments. Well, hello there. So we actually have one more from YouTube and it was from James. Hey, James. James said, I'm so thankful for this community. I have been in a stall for four months and it's frustrating. My lean body and fat have been doing a dance. It's uh, if one is up, the other is down and vice versa. Reading the comments makes me realize I am not alone. I see my journey is the same as other people. It's part of the process. We prop each other up with our stories, our words of encouragement, suggestions, and recipe ideas. So in reality, we are not alone. Thank you, Joe and Rachel, and everyone for a wonderful community. James, thank you so much for saying that because yeah, that's how we feel. And you guys having your comments, sharing your stories, all of the encouragement that we've watched online, it's gotten us through sickness over the last two weeks. That's right. It's continued to encourage us. And personally, it's given me like a get up and go, like, you know, let's do this. Like, this is the next chapter. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get into our Facebook comments. The first one is from James. Hey, James. He says, an apple a day is bull crap. <laughs> Apples are dangerous. Just look at Eve, Snow White, or any pig at a luau. That is awesome. <laughs> I love that when I saw it. Uh, next one is from Victoria. Hey, Victoria. She said, non-scale victory today. I went to my nephew's second birthday party. There was pizza. There was cake. There was ice cream. It smelled amazing, and I knew it would all taste amazing. I've restarted keto a few times already because every time a special event comes around, I give myself permission to splurge a bit. Well, before long, I realized that those special events were becoming more and more frequent. A month ago, I made the decision to be keto, which means that even during special events, I'm going to stay the course. Today was my first test and I passed. I didn't eat the pizza or the cake or the ice cream. Don't get me wrong, it was hard. My dad even tried to coerce me into having the pizza. Wow. But I have now proven to myself I can do this. 13 pounds down this month. I am so proud of you, Victoria. That is awesome. And it does take a lot of just determination that this is, you know, like I'm gonna do this. And um, I don't have this in front of me, but I would love for you to just picture a rose inside of a vase. Okay, so a lot of times you take a rosebud, you've cut it off, it's dead. You put it into the, the vase and it's dead. There, there's no more growth that's going to happen to that rose. It's not going to, you know, build a bigger rose bush or anything, but you will see it bloom. 
And that looks like it's still alive. It looks like not only is it alive, but it's actually getting bigger and bigger. And I think sometimes in our keto journey, especially with a carb addiction, you know, we've cut ourselves off from carbs and we've planted ourselves in this vase of keto and, and we're, we're dead to carbs. Like there's no more carbs that need to be, you know, building us up, but we still feel like, well, this thing isn't dead. It looks to me like my, this carb addiction is for real and it's blossoming. It looks like I'm having a harder time walking away from carbs than I ever did, but it's just the last residual, you know, burst of, of flour, but that it's dead. You've cut yourself off from the source. And a lot of times to prolong, you know what I mean? The, the rosebud that, that has bloomed, you know, we'll add little what plant food to it right. to m- kind of make it last a little bit longer. We'll cut that off too. So yeah. the most that you can do is just walk away from it. That, that carb addiction is not blossoming. We have cut it off at the source and just continue to move forward and understand that like you're going to have success you just got to give yourself some time and and don't worry about like watering that the, that carb problem because you're going to you know turn this thing around mm-hmm. our next one is from carol hey carol carol said i know that joe and rachel say that most things are really zero are rarely zero carbs even if the label says so I've gotten uh, the great value sugar-free whipped cream, and I'm now wondering if ready whip fat-free would be better. Again, Kim Howerton had this great thing. I was messaging her last week, I think it was, you know, because somebody had said something in her th- in her posts or, you know, on Facebook, and I responded, and then she said, like, I sometimes want to tattoo on my head that all heavy whipping cream has zero carbs because I feel like it's a constant battle, right? So many people are just misled by these labels because they're allowed to put zero carbs on there. And the bottom line is if it's got less than one, the company's allowed to put zero. Right. But here's the thing. 0.8 is less than one. Yeah. 0.8 is less than one. Well, if I take eight pennies, I don't have a dime, right? But if I take eight pennies and I keep multiplying it, all of a sudden I have more than a dime. Eventually it adds up. And I can tell you for me, when I got started, there was no such thing as one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream, No, right? Every one, if you look at our early recipes, and again, not saying anything's wrong with it, but I was disillusioning myself that I was having zero carbs. And again, that's why we kind of follow more of having some kind of a total carb cap because I was convinced for a long time, if I put a half a cup of heavy whipping cream into a recipe, zero carbs. it's zero carbs. We'll add that in with the spices that say zero carbs and I'm eating a zero carb meal. Well, again, spices, yeah, there's zero carbs in a quarter of a teaspoon. Guess what? A clove of garlic has a carb in it. So you may, if you only have a tiny bit of garlic, fine. But if you're like me, I could eat 10 cloves of garlic in a sitting. I, we used to go to Blaze Pizza and I would tell them, give me those cloves that they're roasting. I wanted like 30 of them on my pizza. That means that my pizza, before having any sauce, any other vegetables, any cheese, anything on there, I was eating a 20 to 30 carb pizza before anything. And that means my pizza, even without the crust, was about 60 or 70 carbs. Well, and I think sometimes the fact that we come down so hard on this, it's kind of feels like we're, we're meanies, mm-hmm. that we're just saying like, no, you need to count total carbs. You need to understand that there is a serving size and you need to stay within serving sizes Mm -hmm. and what's appropriate, no matter what it is that you're eating. There's, there's ingredients in this food. There's nothing that is just a free for all, Right. but the problem, right. But the problem is if we lie to you and tell you, yeah, do whatever you can eat this, 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 this doesn't matter. It's not, nothing's going to happen. You're going to be so disappointed because 
you're not going to have forward momentum in your health goals. And that is what is really important to us. Not that you're always happy with everything that we have to say because we're telling you the truth, but I truly believe that the truth will set you free because it will give you the freedom to actually choose, okay, this is what I want to eat. This is the portion I need to, to eat. This is what is appropriate. It's not that I'm never gonna have tasty food because we have tons of tasty food in keto. It's just that there is no like eat whatever, whenever, as much forever. Beef. Like, yeah, except for the beef. But usually beef is not the issue that we're struggling with. That's right. It's like we're asking about things like Cool Whip and we're right. asking about dessert stuff and we're asking about like how much nuts and how much like the things that are, you know, heavier in carbs, right. honestly, or fat. And again, we're not saying anything wrong with heavy whipping cream. Do we have heavy whipping cream every once in a while? Yes. Sure. Do we use heavy whipping cream with our keto chat once in a while? Absolutely. All we're saying is, listen, if you look at every single thing that comes into your mouth, with the exception of beef, uh, that it has a carb in it, who are you hurting? Nobody. What's going to happen? At the end of the day, if you've eaten, I don't know, some heavy whipping cream, even of only a half a serving, and maybe it was only 0.3 carbs. But if at the end of the day, you look at your day and say, okay, I ate 30 carbs today. But realistically, because that was from rounding up, but realistically it was only 15. Is that hurting no. anybody? No. What is gonna hurt you if at the end of the day, you look at that label and you said zero and you had six ounces of heavy whipping cream and at the end of the day you're like, I had zero carbs. I don't understand why I'm not in ketosis. I don't understand why I'm not having any success because it's always gonna be better to round up than round down. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Jessica. Hey Jessica, she says, how much total liquid do you need for keto chow ice cream? I'm using heavy cream, been keto for three years, making this for the other half in an attempt to get him off regular ice cream. Thanks for an in advance. Okay, so there's two different ways you can make keto chow ice cream. Number one would be if you have an ice cream maker, you take a pre-made keto chow. And I don't mean like one you bought pre-made, I mean one that you've already made yourself. Um, I think that an ice cream is always going to taste better with the heavy whipping cream. And that's pretty much the only time we use heavy whipping cream with keto chow because our bodies just don't like a lot of heavy whipping cream. So for there, we're gonna use anywhere between two to four ounces of heavy whipping cream. And then the amount of water that you would for your normal keto chow, which is usually about 16 ounces of water. You would prepare your keto chow, stick it in the refrigerator just like you would normally do, let it sit for a few hours to a couple of days, and then when you're ready to have keto chow ice cream, you simply pour it in your ice cream maker and let it get going. So that that's the amount of liquid is whatever a normal keto chow for you is. I will say this, just remember that the more heavy whipping cream you use, the more like ice cream it's going to be. So if you only use one or two ounces of heavy whipping cream, it's gonna be more watered down than if you're using three to four ounces. I find for us three to four ounces is like the perfect amount when it comes to heavy whipping cream. The other way to do it is following our blender ice cream recipe, which I'll leave a link for over Rachel's head. And in that one, we're using about four ounces of heavy whipping cream, and then we're using about six to eight ounces of like almond milk, or you can use water, or you can use uh, the zero sugar uh, Maple uh, Valley. Uh, I think that was Maple Valley, right? The zero sugar milk. Oh yeah. So you can use all of that, and then you're going to put that in with your keto chow, and then about two cups of ice. When it comes to the ice, it's kind of trial and error, and it only really works in a Vitamix or a similar type of high-end blender. But there, you're usually using just enough liquid to give the blend and the ice is becoming your water. So you're usually, again, somewhere only about eight to 10 ounces of water before the ice. Uh, next one is from Sabrina. Hey Sabrina. She said, I have a question about blood pressure. Has anyone gotten off of their medicine only to have it creep back up and have to go back on a small dose or, or were you able to keep it in check another way? Asking for a friend. Okay, first of all, we are not doctors or health professionals or nurses or anything like that. And anything that we tell you is from our own personal knowledge, what we've learned, what we've studied in experiments on ourselves. Um, when it comes to sodium, again, I don't have the book here anymore because I just was getting ready to ship it out to my mom. I highly recommend the salt fix. 
It is a great book. I'll put a link for it down below. And one of the things in there, believe it or not, you may want to examine how much sodium you are taking in. And if you're new on keto, I think one of the biggest problems that people have when they get started on keto is uh, not taking in enough sodium. Right. And believe it or not, when you read that book, one of the things he talks about is that not having enough sodium can actually cause increased blood pressure. So unfortunately in this country and around the world, we have demonized the wrong white crystal. That's right. And we, we demonized salt and we've said sugar is awesome and it's the other way around. So I would maybe take a look at your sodium. And again, if you, if it's, if you have major heart problems, if you have really blood pressure problems, check in with your doctor. We're not saying not to take a talk to your doctor or anything like that, but there are some other alternatives and that might be one thing you might want to take a look at. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Angina. Hey, Lisa. She said, happy Saturday, y'all. I tried Joe and Rachel's gyro meat recipe. Yay! OMG, it's the bomb. I wrapped them in egg life wraps and filled it with little shredded lettuce, a little bit of Roma tomatoes, and a cucumber and tzatziki sauce. And Hubs decided to have just some pork rinds with it. Boy, did it make plenty of leftovers, too. Has anybody else tried yeah. it yet? Look at that. Leave it to Lisa to turn our recipe into a work of art. Absolutely gorgeous. And does that look just like every Eero, like yes. we're, we're, we're learning to Euro. say Euro, yep. that, that you've ever ordered from like a fancy pants restaurant, right? I know, that right? so good. I was so pleased with that recipe when we made it. Now, one thing that we did not talk about, and then I will say that, you know, like when we made that video, the best way to eat it is not to take it out of the oven and then slice it and just eat it that way. The best way to do it now is that, now you have your Euro meat, okay? And again, yeah. Listen, my entire life I was taught gyro. So, know. you know, when you know Sorry. better, you do better. Right. So we're working on it. Um, but take that Euro meat and now when you're ready to eat it, slice it up, throw it on the Blackstone for a couple of seconds. You can throw it in your air fryer. You could put it on a frying pan. But even when you would go to a Greek restaurant, usually that's how they take it. They kind of fry it up first. And when you take that meat and then slice it thin and then fry it up very quickly, it elevates it to a whole new level. Whole nother level. Uh, next one is from Kristen. Hey Kristen, she says, question. I take an electrolyte every morning, perfect keto. Today I tried Redmond's Relight and I really like it. Is there a difference in the two? Would there be a reason to use both other than using Relight for exercise and such? Um, okay, so no. So here's the difference I can tell you off the top of my head. And again, we like both. I like Redmond a little bit better because number one, I like the flavor. And by the way, I forgot to mention, Redmond has two brand new flavors. The mango is Orange so mango, which is amazing. And also strawberry lemonade. There's a link down below. If you use that link, you're gonna get 15% off of your purchase. But I like the flavors with Redmond. Is it a little salty for some people? Absolutely, but like I said, you can add a little bit more stevia if you wanna cut it down, or you can even water it down a little bit more. Uh, but the biggest difference is Redmond has more sodium in it. And then the Perfect Keto, which is probably my second favorite, has about 100 more milligrams of potassium. But in the end, I look at like, what do I need to get everything of? So if I can get 1,000 milligrams of sodium with my Redmond, and then I can get about, you know, 500 milligrams of potassium with the Redmond. Whereas I believe the uh, Perfect Keto has much less sodium, but again, only 100 more milligrams of potassium. So I, for me, everything is cost. And it right. works out that the most cost efficient way to get my electrolytes and also have a good flavor would be with the Redmond one. But nothing's wrong with either one of them. No, they're both delicious. Okay, next one is from Shauna. Hey Shauna, for Joseph and Bronson and anyone else who identifies, unless of course you are Anthony, who has some great hair, a bad day with a bald head is better than a good day with a man bun. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Like I honestly have always, like I've never even dated Joe with hair. So no. like, I don't know you with any hair. I've always loved the bald guy. You did for like two weeks. Yeah, because my mom said, why don't you try to grow it back? She wanted to see my hair. And then it just grew back like on the sides and it was Pure, kind of a self-esteem blow. It was like all white yeah. when it came in and Grandpa a big Joe. spot up here. And I was like, yeah, you Thanks, got mom. it for two weeks. I'm done. I will never grow that hair again. Except for like up until I didn't shave for a week. 
And uh, yeah, this is this feels so much better right now. They, I, I think this is the best age to be bald. Yeah. It feels like lots of cool people like The Rock. Bruce Willis. Right. Like there's a lot of cool people who are bald. Yeah. And so I think if you're if you're gonna be bald at any time of of, of if history, this is the time to be bald. This is the time to do it. I feel like you have support for for baldness. I'm still working on getting Anthony to do a video without a man bun, but we're, yeah, we'll keep I know, working just on to it. put it down. Okay, we have one more. It's from Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer said, my goal is 10,000 steps five times a week, but this week I ended up meeting my goal seven wow. times. I've met my exercise goals eight weeks in a row, and it feels amazing. So good. I set realistic goals, goals that I knew I could meet with a little bit of effort. Some days needed more effort than others, and every week I was so proud of myself for meeting my goals. I'm going to keep going, not because because it will make me lose tons of weight or make me see me uh, make me super buff but because it is good for my mental my physical and my spiritual health and i feel good about setting a simple goal that is good for me and then meeting it week after week jennifer i am so proud of you and i believe that also and it's really honestly one of the reasons why i thought we need to rein back the monthly challenges that we're putting out to people because you need to set the monthly challenges for yourself. And not because we think that it's value, but there's something that's valuable to you. Maybe it is, I'm going to stay on meal plan every single day this week, or I'm going to get a certain amount of steps in, or I am going to be very intentional in my relationships. I'm going to write a bunch of thank you notes to people that I care about. Whatever the goal is, you make it. You set it for yourself, and you're going to feel like she did, which is, totally like an achiever mm -hmm. right and and we need that i think that that helps us to to venture out into goals in other areas of our life when we can set a goal for ourselves and achieve it it just makes us feel like we've got this yep. Well, that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. We really appreciate everybody for joining us. Uh, now, again, if you've been part of this week's premiere, thank you very much for typing in the chat down below. Now, again, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so that you're notified when new videos are coming out. And also, don't forget about, hopefully, this week's live stream at 8.30 p.m. Happening. Eastern Time on Thursday. We really miss hanging out with you guys live. And hopefully this week, we will finally be able to get back in after two weeks of missing it. Back in the saddle again. And now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon in that way. Every single time we are live, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.